Yes, Lord, we celebrate your goodness tonight. Come on. Praise the Lord. This is Psalm for the day that is coming to you from the redeemed Christian Church of God in Abuja. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the day is dying and the night is also dying. Thank you for this opportunity to minister to your people. Take all the glory and all the honor in Jesus Christ's most precious name. Amen. Brethren, our psalm for the day is Psalm 147 verse 11, which reads, The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Our psalm for the day mentions two groups of people that God is interested in their affairs and takes pleasure in. These are people who fear God. Secondly, people who hope in God's mercy. Regarding the first group of people, the Bible declares in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, that the fear of the, of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The Bible also advises us in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, that wisdom is the principal thing. Brethren, it is important to stress that the fear we should have of God should be one that arises out of reverence for him. We are the children of the Most High God, made in his image. We are required to fear him because of God's very nature and because it is the wise thing to do. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29, that the Lord our God is a consuming fire. He consumes anything that is, in, is, that is in opposition to the manifestation of his will and purpose. Let me say congratulations to you if you are already working in God's will. Under the state of his grace, the almighty God will support your struggle in life by consuming every enemy opposing your progress in life. This is why Moses assured the Israelites in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13, that the enemy you see today, you shall see them no more. This is because the King of kings and the Lord of lords will consume them. We are called to fear God because, his mighty works, because of his mighty works of wonders. With a mighty hand, he led the children of Israel out of Egypt. According to Exodus chapter 13, 13 verse 12, he guided and guarded them out of captivity by the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Having promised to bring them into the promised land, God acted decisively to bring his promise to pass. In the process, he parted even the Red Sea to demonstrate his omnipotency. Psalm 138 verse 2 tells us that the almighty God honors his word above his name. I have good news for everyone today that is listening to me. God will honor his every word for our lives so that we may worship and even fear him. The Bible declares in Psalm 118 verse 17, Psalm 118 verse 17, that we shall live and we shall not die. God's word in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 says that we should be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion over the works of his creation. His word in, Jerem in, in Isaiah 41 verse 10 says that he will help us. These words of blessings from the almighty God shall come to pass even in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to reflect upon your life and God's word concerning every area of your being. Speaking God's words of blessings, of protection, and of provision into your life. His mighty right hand of righteousness shall bring us to our places of rest and places to satisfy, to satis of satisfaction for his glorious namesake. When the prophet of Baal dared to challenge the living God in the contest of the Mount Carmel, the Almighty God brought fear to the people when he answered Elijah by fire. So mighty was his power that the people shouted in 1 Kings 
chapter 18, verse 39. First King, chapter 18, verse 39. That the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Brethren, the Almighty who answered Elijah will also answer for us today. Like Elijah, we are to stand before God in confidence, knowing that he is faithful to hear and to answer us. And you know what? He will indeed answer by fire, consuming every enemy around us, every obstacle, every challenges confronting our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He will do so to bring glory to his name. He will do so to bring honor to his name and to every word that he has authored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. From the glorious height of his wisdom, King Solomon made a most profound statement in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, saying, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter of life. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Brethren, do you desire to conclude your earthly journey with resounding success? Then follow King Solomon's advice and fear God. Follow it for your earthly journey to be meaningful and purposeful. Follow it for your joy on earth to be full. Follow it that you may make it, my brothers and sisters, to heaven. I pray for you today that your efforts on earth will not be in vain. That you will conduct yourself responsibly and act to fulfill every area of your life. I pray that God will have a positive testimony concerning you and every member of your family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our psalm for the day also says that God will have pleasure with people who hope in his mercy. Brethren, we all need God's mercy to speak for us at all times. No one is without sin. No one is perfect. When in Luke chapter 18, verse 19, Jesus Christ was called good, he declared that only the Father in heaven is good. We need God's grace to open us up to his throne room of mercy. David overcome the consequences of his grievous sin of adultery and mother by seeking God in the place of mercy, shown in Psalm 51. So see, no serious prayer session is ever complete without a prayer for God's mercy. The Lord Almighty said in Exodus 33 verse 19, Exodus 33 verse 19, that I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. The dispensation of God's mercy is exclusively his alone to make and to give. Our joy, our job is to seek it with a sincere heart and a repentant heart. God will answer us because he said in Jeremiah 29, 11, that his thought towards us are that of good and not of evil to bring all of us to an expected end of fulfillment and success. I pray for you today, my brothers and sisters, that the almighty God's mercy will speak for you today. I pray that the flow of his mercy will open up new opportunities and new experiences for you in your life and help you to make progress through life. We shall rejoice as we are enveloped in his Shekinah glory for God's mercies. We shall experience rest as his mercies pour forth towards us. Because of his mercies and grace, our lives shall soar to new heights of contentment and progress that we may experience life in the fullness of the purpose for which we were sent forth. May it be so for you and for me and for all of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's most precious name we pray. Amen. Yes, Lord, we celebrate your goodness tonight. Come on.